Hey, welcome to part two of the fly rig pedal board build. Today, we're gonna to be picking up where we left off. So if you haven't seen part one yet, go ahead and make sure you check that out. Um, today, we're gonna to be doing all the modifications to the board. We're gonna be uh, wiring and routing all of the audio and the power. And if that's something that you're into, let's go ahead and check it out. So here we are a few days later. Um, and we're gonna start building the rest of the board even though uh, we're still missing one piece. Um, we're gonna go ahead and try to mount um, everything and we'll have to run some cabling and so we'll have to drill some holes. Um, but let's just start with this. So um, since the last video I actually went and um, we, we've made this a hard top um, instead of a Velcro top. Uh, I'm really not a fan of Velcro. Um, I like using the dual lock. Uh, I just think it's it's better in every way. It holds stronger um, when you want it to, um, but it's a lot easier and cleaner um, to clean up the residue. Um, so we actually went ahead and we turned this into a hard top. Um, so we just took the, the previous top and uh, made a even slightly um, more heavy duty uh, top here um, and that way we can kind of keep everything nice and tight and clean and don't have to worry about anything shifting um, so that's about it so um, before we do anything uh, what we're gonna have to do first is uh, mount the power um, so we've got the power in here um, which will be on the right hand side of the board um, here by the jacks that we installed um, and then we actually have um, a power out um, a little plug there um, and it will go on the left hand side of the board um, again that's just convenience outlet on uh, left hand side of the board so but the first thing we have to do is we're gonna have to cut um, this male to female IEC uh, cable and attach it to this. So let's go ahead and do that. So what I've done here is um, I've got the power now installed. Um, so we've got like a little extra slack um, for the input, but that's okay. It's not the end of the world. Um, so we've got these little C clamps here that we're gonna tie everything down nice and tidy. Um, and then now we have um, created our out um, for the power, so the kind of power through uh, courtesy outlet. Um, so I've marked in here the blue tape, um, just a general idea of where the power supply will be mounted. I've got a plan and an idea um, for how to drill the holes um, for the power, since all the audio is going to be routed on top of the board aside from the um, input and output of the whole board being right here. I don't want a bunch of holes um, kind of super visible. So because we're using the dual lock, um, it actually raises the pedal just a little bit. Um, so actually, let me find some. I don't know if you can see that, um, but it raises it, I mean, um, can get a little feeler gauge here. Um, I 
I mean, it is right under a quarter of an inch. So, I think that we will be able to route um, the power cables um, under the center of where the pedal is actually going to be mounted um, and then just kind of run it around and over. So um, let's do this. Let's flip it over and let's just do a dry test of the pedals and see kind of where we end up. Um, and what we might do is go ahead and drill some of those holes um, for the power and see where we get. Okay, just quick note, like I said, we're still waiting on uh, one more H9 to arrive. Um, USPS seems to have lost it. Um, so, um, but luckily because of these uh, barn three um, switches are exactly the size that it's going to be, um, we can actually go ahead and mount everything um, and just leave the cables uh, kind of hanging where that third H9 is actually going to sit. Alright, so here's where we are um, with the pedals. Uh, just kind of dry fit sitting on the board. Um, so I've already previously tested this um, layout with cables um, just to make sure everything's gonna fit um, exactly right. And this is very tight, um, but I think it's gonna work. So um, let's go ahead and start drawing some lines and then we can drill some holes in this top. sharper bit. Alright, so now that we've done that, um, as you can see we had a little bit of tear out, but um, that was to be expected. Um, so here are our holes for all of the pedals um, except for the top row H9s um, to route power. So um, these holes should be big enough to route a couple through um, where that is needed. But where these H9s are, um, it's going to be a little tricky because I'm going to have to miss the power supply. So what I'm going to do now is We're just going to kind of see and do some redneck measuring without math here to, um, to find a good place to put the holes for the power. As long as I put those holes for the power. far enough back, then we should be just fine. So as long as they're far enough back here, um, I think we'll be all right. So um, I do want to miss the power inlet and outlet um, for sure. So I think as long as we stay in 
those screws, then we'll be we'll be good to go here. So it looks like we're good. So let's go ahead and do our initial mounting of the power supply. And then we can start mounting some pedals. So normally, I wouldn't put this much on a pedal, but since this is going to be hanging upside down constantly, um, we definitely don't want this power supply moving at all. And in fact, I might even reinforce it over the top, um, just depending once we get it all set up, uh, how you know co confident I feel that it's not going to move. And this is the way that I typically do this, is I attach it to the pedal, I mark out where, like I have here with the blue tape, um, where I want this thing to end up. And then I attach the side that's gonna go on the board. I attach it. The dual lock to dual lock and then I will peel the adhesive and try to keep it out in the open air for as short amount of time as possible so it doesn't collect a bunch of dust in the air or anything and I'll even wipe this off just to make sure there's not a bunch of dust anywhere all right Make sure I've got both of them going here. We always want to make sure that we're mounting this facing the correct way. So what I'm going to do is start from the bottom and then work my way up. Um, because the top end is going to overhang just a hair by the cables. Um, and so I'm trying to keep this bottom row pretty flush down here. bottom two rows attached now um, but actually I did something wrong I as I'm kind of routing audio and just pushing the, the power through the holes uh, as I go um, I didn't factor in that this H9 is going to be dedicated to modulation so 
Um, some presets would actually be go before drive, um, and some are going to go after drive. Um, and so to do that, actually after this compressor here, um, I'm going to go in to the first input of the H9 and then come out of the first output into the boost. Um, and then it'll go through the drives uh, and then this uh, kind of compressor boost and then back into the second input of the H9 and out into the second and third H9. So um, I made this cable a mistake, um, but that's all right. So I'm gonna go and um, kind of finish up routing some of this audio and um, yeah, we'll go from there. So everything is mounted to the board. Um, all of the audio is run and actually everything has power run from the pedal side. Um, but now all the, the power is just kind of scattered on the bottom. And so we'll need to attach those to the power supply. Um, but right now it is about 2.36 in the morning and uh, I think I'm gonna call it a day. And uh, We'll come back and uh, see you guys tomorrow. So here we are uh, a couple days later um, and actually received um, this third H9 finally in the mail. So I was able to attach that to the barn three and get everything wired up. So let's kind of walk through the audio routing um, and the signal flow real quick and then we will take a look at the power on the underside so on the right side of the board here we have our power in our amp out and our guitar in okay so on the left side we have our power through Again, for iPad, uh, just for quick notes, um, for sessions, or um, a set list for a live. So here is the signal flow of the pedal board. So we come in straight into the fuzz so that we don't have any impedance issues. So we go into the fuzz, out through to the optical compressor, this is just the initial compression. And then we go out of the compressor into the first H9. This H9 is set up in pre-post mode. So on the pre side, input one is out of the compressor. 
And then out of output one, we go into this boost, which is just a pretty clean boost, adds a little bit of highs, uh, a little bit of gain. Um, it's like the LPB1 style power boost. Then we go into our first gain stage, which is the Centura Clon. And then we go out into the Tube Screamer 808. Then we go into the T-Rex Mud Honey. Then we go into the Vertex Dynamic Distortion, which is kind of the only modern drive on here. And then we go out of the Dynamic Distortion into the Bogner Harlow, which is a boost that has some compression. But the main thing is, is it's got a, a Rupert Neve transformer inside of here. This is actually the V2. I actually thought I was buying the, the V1, but I took the back off and, and just to double check, and it is still the same Rupert Neve transformer in here. So I'm using this as my um, a stack boost, and that's just kind of an always on stacking, kind of a gain stage, but it's still very clean. Uh, but it's a big part of my sound, is having two compressors set very low. Like the compression on here is actually all the way down, but it still compresses a little bit because of that transformer and because of the design. Um, and the compression here is set very, very subtle. So it doesn't sound really like I'm going through compressor, but it feels really good. So we go out of the Harlow into the second input or the post mode of the H9 out of the second output into the second H9, which is handling mostly delays, and then into the third H9, which is handling mostly reverbs. And then out of that goes to the output of the board. Uh, this is all running mono. Um, that was a big part of this board, is just being a mono board, a grab and go kind of fly date board. So let's take a look at the under. That's all the audio routing. And I've run all the power like we looked at in the earlier in this video, drilling the holes to route the power down. And I got all of that plugged in, but none of it is actually set up. So it's all kind of messy down here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these C clamps um, to be able to just manage this cable and keep it nice and tidy. Um, that way nothing can get snagged and accidentally unplugged and then all of a sudden, you know, a pedal's not working, my board goes down. This kind of keeps everything really safe. So let's go ahead and do that. everything screwed down now all of the C clamps and that way uh, nothing can get bumped uh, on accident underneath the board since it is open and this is actually a board that goes in a soft case instead of a road case just to keep weight down and what I don't want to happen is kind of set it on a stage and there'd be a cable accidentally under Neath the board that, that knocks something out. So this way everything is nice uh, and tight to where it's supposed to be but if you notice none of these um, are 
are really crimped in any way, they can still flex and that way there's not too much strain on any cable. So some of these I do have uh, turning and looping back, but I gave it enough room to where it's not going to be pinching the cable and weakening um, the copper inside. And so I think we have everything ready to go. Um, the last thing that we need to do is power it up and do a playthrough. Alright, so we have the board totally done now. So let's walk through some of the tones and I'll show you why I chose specifically some of the pedals that I did. Before we start at the beginning of the signal chain, I want to address a couple things. One, I never have no pedals on. So this is bone dry. Okay, uh, this is a Smart Bell, it's a Dumble style amp and I've got a, a 210 cab uh, loaded with slushing greenbacks in it. So this is a great sound, but I never play without any pedals on. So the one thing um, that I cannot play without, which is reverb. And so this far left H9 is handling really just reverbs. That's really the main job that it does. So this is spring uh, reverb here. Okay, and then the second thing is a subtle compression which happens after my drives. So that's what the Bogner Harlow is doing over here on the right. It's got a boost, bloom, and tone control. So essentially what it's doing is it's giving me a master volume after my drives. It's giving me a master EQ because it's got a very powerful tone knob. And then it's got some subtle compression and it just kind of boosts everything, makes it everything a little more musical in my opinion. And it's not really compressing a lot. I've still got plenty of dynamics, but it makes everything a little more musical and it gives me so much power after my drives just to shape and, and really identify some trouble frequencies or something. So those two things are going to be on 100% of the time, no matter what. So now let's backtrack and start at the beginning of the signal chain. The first thing that the guitar sees is this fuzz, which is a king tone mini fuzz. is the silicon. It's a great fuzz face type fuzz. Okay, and it does the cleanup thing great. So it's a great fuzz um, and it's really versatile. Um, I love that I've got the bias on there. So that's the first thing that the guitar sees. Then it goes into this Fox Gear Squeeze, which is an optical compressor. And this is to stack some more compression at the beginning before my drives. And so this gives much more of that classic compressor effect. <laughs> Okay, so that's not always on, but that's for that very compressed sound that happens before the drives. So then out of that compressor, it goes into the first side of this far right H9, which is set up in pre slash post mode. So pre is going to be before the drive section and post is going to be after the drive section. So out of the compressor, it goes into the pre side, which is things like Univibe. <laughs> I want that before my drives um, and then after the pre side of the H9 that is doing chorus, univibe, uh, that type of modulation, it goes into 
this boost. And so this boost right here is based on an LPB1 by Electro Harmonics. When I was a kid, that was the cheapest boost that you could get. It was like $30 new. You could find them used for $15 at Guitar Center. Um, and I actually grew to really love that boost. Um, it's not super transparent. Uh, it does something weird and woofy in the low mids, and then it gives a lot of punch in the high mids, but I use it to boost my drive. So, so you can just kind of hear what it's doing, but I never use that on the clean sound. I'll boost my drives because I typically don't actually stack overdrives. So I start with my lowest gain drive and end up at the highest gain. Other people do it the other way, but I've always started with my lowest and kind of increased in gain after that. But since I'm not stacking, it's not that big of a deal. So this Klon, uh, clone pedal, which is a Centura by Sierra Tone, my first stage drive, it's kind of subtle. Just a little bit of overdrive coming from that, mainly an EQ shift in those mids. And then I'll hit it with the boost here. And this kind of takes it into that next gain level. Okay, and then the next overdrive, one step up and gain from the Klon, is this TS-808 Tube Screamer. Everybody loves a good Tube Screamer. And then I'll hit it with the boost. Just give a little bit of a, a gain kick there. And then the T-Rex Mud Honey, which is kind of what started the catalyst um, for me building this secondary pedal board. This is definitely a bigger step up in gain um, from the Tube Screamer. And then I hit it with the boost. And then the highest gain pedal, the most modern sounding pedal on here is the Vertex Dynamic Distortion. It's a lot more scooped in the mids. And then if you hit it, with the boost again. It definitely sings a lot more than the other drives uh, because of the compression that's inside of that pedal. Um, and then when I hit it with the boost, it kind of just smooths everything out. It's a very smooth sounding game. <laughs> That's the most gainy sound that's on this board. And then we come out of that dynamic distortion back into the other side of this H9 that's handling modulation. And so that's gonna be things like the Leslie sound that I have here. Okay, and then out of that side of this H9, so out of the post side, it goes into the center H9, which is handling all of my delays. And 
then finally that last H9, which is handling all kinds of fun reverb um, that are hidden inside the H9. I think the black hole ones. <laughs> super fun to play around with. So this is kind of how I typically use my board. So I'll either use uh, one gain or one gain with the boost in front of it to kind of kick it um, into the next place of gain. Um, I always have reverb on and I always have a compression after my drives. And that way I'm always kind of getting the similar feel to my hands. Um, and I just, I, I think it's one of those things where it just makes everything a little bouncier and more musical, which is something that I value. Um, I still value having dynamics. I gotta have those dynamics. So this is a great pedal that the compression gives you a feel while retaining plenty of dynamic range within your board. Thanks for checking out today's video. I hope you enjoyed part two of this fly rig secondary pedal board build. If this is a channel that you enjoy or you know somebody would enjoy, go ahead and share it with them. Subscribe, hit the like button, and we'll see you next time. Hey, how's it going? Welcome to part two. <laughs> Brisket. <laughs> the link for that. Today, oh, ugh. If you haven't, uh, a board build, pedal board, mm, the most pedals, okay. All right. You, uh, <clears throat> okay. Hit the like and subscribe. Oh my God. <laughs> okay.